Hi, I'm Blue, the cosplayer known as Blue Clarice, and I'm going to be showing you how to make this cosplay. First, we are going to go to the thrift store. Once we arrived, I made a beeline straight for the sweaters. Because we're cosplaying Dr. Stein from Soul Eater, we are going to need two different color sweaters, one lighter gray and one darker gray. You want these sweaters to be as close as possible, but I would be honest, I didn't really do that. Ooh, I think I found one. This is definitely giving sign. Oh, okay. So the sweater I picked for the dark sweater is actually a oversized sweater dress, which will be important later, but now I had to find the lighter sweater. And this will also be a problem later because this sweater is nothing like the other one. I did find some other options, but ultimately I went with my gut and chose the first two that I liked. Now, I did look around for a lab coat. I am a scientist and I don't know where my lab coat is. So I didn't find anything and I couldn't find mine. So I looked where all the fabric is. And I kid you not, the curtain section of the thrift store is literally where I started so many of my cosplays. You'd be surprised the things I've made out of a curtain. <laughs> but anyways, I ended up finding the perfect white fabric for a lab coat or at least for the vibe I was going for. It's velvety on the outside and smooth on the inside and I just had to get it. Now that we're back home, I'm gonna lay out all of the different items I got from this trip just so I could help myself visualize this cosplay. The thing is, I wasn't entirely happy with the color of the darker sweater. I wanted to lighten it a bit and I know that some knits can be bleached, but this was not one of them. I actually ended up leaving it in the bleach bath overnight and it still didn't work. So now we're finally getting to the crafting part. We're going to first detach the neck piece from the lighter sweater. I'm going in and trying to clip the threads that attach it, but it's all the same color. So I kind of just gave up and straight up cut it off. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the darker sweater, and we're going to replace that neck piece with the lighter sweater's neck piece. So this is a bit tricky because the sweaters are different sizes, but because they're both a stretch fabric, I was able to stretch it and just kind of get it to work. Before machine sewing, it's best to base these sweaters together just so everything stays in place. This is the part where you want to double check that your head fits through that hole. Next, we are adding that one stripe he has across the front of his sweater. We are going to cut off the top part of the lighter sweater just so that we can use the bottom part. This part is going to be somewhat similar to what we just did. We're going to stretch the fabric together as we pin it. And then I'm going to baste and machine sew it after. You need to play around with the settings on your machine just so it can be a bit shallow. The zigzag stitch allows for this fabric to have stretch as you move. And keep in mind, it is a little tricky sewing these fabrics just because they are so bulky. I realized because of the sweaters I chose, I can make this a dress. Stein dress, let's go! Now we are on to making the sleeves. I'm going to use some of the extra fabric I had of the light sweater to make a sleeve and I was kind of nervous about this so I did pin and create the sleeve on top of the original sleeve. It was pretty bulky but I was happy enough with it. The thing was I decided because of the bulk I was going to have to also detach the sleeve on the other side and take it apart to remake the sleeve so the bulk would be a bit similar. Here's the look with both sleeves, and we are now ready to stitch on all the little stitches. This was easily the most time-consuming part of this costume. I decided to use yarn because I think it matched the sweaters pretty well. This yarn was something I got on sale a long time ago, so I already had it. There isn't a good way to machine sew this, so you're gonna have to hand sew all of this down. Unless you don't want to be extra like me, you could definitely just glue it, but uh, that's just not how I roll. I'm just hand sewing every single stitch down. This part looks quick, but it actually took 50 billion years to complete, but eventually I did it. I'm really happy with the result. Like, 
I'm happy that I decided to go with my gut and do a dress instead of the regular sweater. It's super cute. Now we're going to take a little break from using thrifted things to using a foam roll and some foam clay because now we need to make the screw that goes through Stein's head. So I started out by making a model out of paper. And while this was helpful, I didn't think about how the foam is thicker. So it changed how the model worked, but this is a good enough guide that I still would recommend doing this. I ended up taking everything apart and cutting this tube like thing to make the pattern. Throughout this process, I'm going to be tracing every pattern piece on the foam before I cut it out. One of the first pattern pieces I did was make two rectangles that I'm going to glue each side of the rectangle together to make the tube. Once I completed the tube, I did use a bit of sandpaper to sand down the edge so it's a bit more even. For one of the tubes, you're going to need a stopper, so I just trace the circle on the end so that I could create a finishing piece. The other side will have the actual like screw part to it. Now for the larger screw part, you will be following your pattern, but I did use a uh, <laughs> some hair gel to make this pattern. Really just use whatever you got, but um, yeah, if, you're, if you have an afro, you might have the same hair gel. It's just kind of how we roll on this channel. Anyways, I made two of the exact same circle and we're gonna go from here. The tricky part about this is that a screw isn't flat, so one circle stays the same while the other we need to cut a strip out of because we're going to make this strip go down a little bit. It'll make more sense once you see what I do. We have to cut out this kind of weird rectangle shape with two notches in it. This is going to be what goes around the edge of the screw. But before we do that, we do need to stick a hole in the bottom of the other circle just so that we can stick our tube into it. Once we have that together, we'll glue the rectangle with the notches around the circle with the hole in it before gluing on the other pieces. This part was actually really tricky and didn't line up exactly because I was using the paper proportions, which was not as thick as the foam, but it worked well enough for what I wanted. And I did go back in and sand the edges just so things would line up a little bit more. It wasn't perfect, but this kind of gave me another idea to make foam stitches. So this is not in his design. It's something I decided to add, but if I'm going to add a bunch of stitches to his outfit, why not add stitches to his nail? All I did was hand sculpt these little stitches out of foam clay and put them all over the screw. Of course, we can't leave our screw looking white like this. So now I'm going in with several layers of silver paint. And then I'm adding the little details of painting these stitches black. After letting the paint dry, I had to figure out a way to attach the screw to a wig. You could attach it to a headband, but I didn't want that squeezing my head. So I did a combination of hot glue to a panel of foam and sewing that foam to the wig itself. This was more awkward to do with the larger screw and it took a lot of playing around, but eventually I got it and this was way more comfortable than what a headband would be. Honestly, the stitches are such a nice touch. Ah, oh, it's so cute. And now I'm about to move on to making the jacket. Now we are taking back out our thrifted fabrics, which is the curtain I got for the lab coat. I am using a pattern in this picture. I mean, not really, it's kind of as a guide, but I really just scrapped this. I kind of winged this pattern. I make a lot of jackets, so I kind of knew what I was doing, but there's also a lot of really good lab coat tutorials online. Here's me trying it on, just seeing if the sizing fit. And I wasn't doing too bad with that. I did want to have a yoke. This is kind of a fake yoke because I just folded a line in the middle of the pattern and sewed it to look like a yoke. Next, I made one of the sleeves and I also tried that on. Making a jacket like this, there's a lot of fittings since I'm not really using a pattern. And then I did decide to serge everything. I just wanted this to be a nice jacket that I could throw in the wash and it wouldn't fall apart. So everything went well until I decided to do the armholes, 
which I ended up making a bunch of mistakes as I was trying to do something fancy. I don't even remember what I was trying to do, but I did have to unpick a lot of this. And then I decided to just sew the sleeves kind of like normal. Well, let me just explain real quick. I usually sew the sleeves separate and then attach it to the jacket. But this time I sewed the sleeve onto the jacket and then sewed everything together which made it a little weird, so I probably won't be doing it that way again, but that doesn't matter. Once I was sure everything was fitting correctly, I decided to work on the pockets, which were just cut out pieces of fabric. I spoke about this in my last video, but when using a curtain, you can utilize the hemmed parts of the curtain, so you don't have to make your own, and that's what I did with these pockets. I'm getting close to being finished with this, but I still have to do the collar and lapel, which is easier than what I had to do for my Sebastian suit. Um, I actually learned a lot doing that, so doing the collar wasn't too bad. But to finish it off, I'm not having a lining because this is a lab coat, but I will have a strip on the inside that kind of makes the edge nice. I'm cutting out the piece for it now, basically following the edge of the jacket. So as you can see here, the plan is to flip this inside out and then we'll have a nice finished seam on the part that y'all will see. So this is how the understitch lapel is looking. I do have a little bit of areas I need to fix up. I think I'm going to do like a light stitch to keep this in place, but um, I'm actually really liking it and I think it's fine that I didn't use interfacing in this. I probably have to do like a better pressing of that but I'm gonna move on to the collar. After adding in the collar, I did add some bias tape just around the edge, just as another thing to make the inside really nice. But I did serge other parts of the inside. I think we are just about done with the jacket before we get to everyone's favorite part, sewing in the stitches. This is practically the exact same process as the last time, if not more annoying because the... <laughs> The yarn fibers and the velvetiness of this curtain do not mix. I have to use a lint roller almost every time I wear this, which is kind of annoying, but either way, this is just me sewing and sewing and sewing until I'm finally done with this project. And here's the big reveal, my Stein cosplay. I really enjoy this piece because I think the textures on the dress are great. And even the lab coat really just brings everything together and of course the hair the earrings and this is a super comfy cosplay for me because i can actually wear my glasses so i just got back from walking around in public as stein i got a lot of weird stares but i'm kind of used to it i just needed to find a good place with some lighting so i could show you all the details i really love how this came out and i hope this inspired you for your future cosplays where you're cosplaying stein or somebody else and if you like this please check out this video, it's another cosplay crafting video and I'll see you in the next one.